guys, I'm back with part two of what my makeup collection would look like if I wasn't a quote unquote beauty guru, which I don't consider myself to be one, but we're just gonna roll with that title. Next is the category of primers. Now, I've never been a big primer person, really, kind of due to laziness, but I absolutely do see a difference in the way my makeup applies as well as how long it lasts when I do use primers. And one is Embryolisse, longtime cult favorite for a lot of pro makeup artists. It is categorized as a nourishing moisturizer for all skin types. And what it is is very much of a hybrid type product. It's part balm, part moisturizer, part primer, and it just glides over the skin. It makes the skin just really smooth out and be a perfect canvas for makeup to go on top. I have to pick Hourglass and their mineral primer, the Veil Mineral Primer. This is such a beautiful primer, it really is. It just, it does so much. It smooths, it mattifies a little bit. Next, let's talk about some glow products. My number one, let's just get it out of the way because it's another MAC product, but it's, it's my baby, it's one of my babies. I can't leave it out. It's one of their, again, MSF's Mineral Skin Finishes in Gold Deposit. Come on now, look at me, I'm a woman of color, okay? Gold Deposit from time, from days gone by. Gold Deposit has been a staple for so many chocolatey, type of skin tones. Another pressed powder highlight that is a favorite, a huge favorite, because of the formula, it's that good, and it's from Lancome. This is their dual finish highlighter. This is one of those powders that even putting your finger into the pot, into the pan, and swirling it around, it feels like you're touching a cream. It's that finely milled and that creamy feeling and it glides onto the skin like you would think a cream highlighter would only be able to do. And then I have three liquid type of glow products. One, definitely another late to jump on the bandwagon for this one, Max Strobe Cream. Fell into the, the belief, the, the false belief that this was for dry skins. It was gonna make me look too oily and greasy, but it does not at all. If you're like me and you have oilier skin and thought MAC strobe cream wasn't for you, try it. Charlotte Tilbury, Hollywood Flawless Filter. Again, multi-faceted product. You can use it for so many different things, under makeup, on top of makeup, all by itself. If you don't wanna bother with any other face makeup, just put a little bit of this on just to bring some life into your skin and just call it a day. My baby, my baby, my Hourglass Vanish Cream Stick Highlighter. This beauty glides onto the skin, melts into the skin. Out of all of the glow products that I've mentioned, it's, it's probably my number one in terms of the impact. It has the ability to give a very blinding a uh, highlighted effect. If that's what you want, you can pack it on for a, for the most intense highlight that you could want, but no texture, no crazy looking uh, film on the skin. It It's beautiful. It does such a great job of really melting into the skin completely. I have two bronzers, only two to show you guys. Over the years, I, ooh, ooh, as a woman of color, it's been a struggle finding suitable bronzers for my skin tone. And one is Becca and their Sunlit Bronzer. Beautiful, beautiful bronzer. Becca did that thing when they came out with this line. And Fenty, Riri's Fenty Bronzer. And this is the powder version. Yes, I have tried the creams 
and they just weren't for me. Just the shade range just didn't work for me. I'm in between shades, but I'm very happy with the powder. And powder is just easier, so I love recommending powders to everyone because I do believe that creams require a little bit more finessing and playing around with to really get it to melt into your skin, blend out seamlessly and evenly. So powders are where it's at for me. Blush is up next and I have my babies here in my trusty little palette that I created myself, MAC and NARS. And I have my beautiful uh, self-made palette here with some MAC blushes, which are the circular ones and a couple of NARS blushes that are the rectangular shaped ones on the end. As far as the MAC shades are concerned, there are a few in here that have been discontinued, but the ones that are still available, I'll put the shade names down below. And these two NARS shades are still available. I will link those as well. MAC and NARS blushes have just always blown me away with their range, the shades, the, the, the undertones of, of the different shades, the different finishes. Now let's move on to eyes. And I'm gonna start with the probably eye liner. Only have one dimension, Marc Jacobs. I cannot stop using <laughs> this eyeliner. I just love it. It's so creamy, glides on the skin without any tugging or elbow grease needed. It stays put wherever you put it. It's going to stay there. You got a few seconds when you initially apply to smudge it out if you want to do that. But after that, it's set. Next are brows. Didn't think brows were all that important until I really got into getting them done. Haven't gotten them done in a while because of what's going on in the world. I've been maintaining on my own. I hope, I hope they don't look that terrible. Anastasia, brow whiz, amazing. Yes, the spoolie's trash. It's broken on me like it has for so many other people but the pencil itself is wonderful. Benefit, precisely my brow. Love this pencil, does a great job, equally as great as Anastasia. If I had to choose between the two, I'd probably go for Benefit just because it's just a sturdier product, but they both do a fantastic job. And I have to say that Anastasia is maybe a tad creamier if you don't like pencils that are super super stiff. I do think Anastasia is just goes on a tad bit creamier than Benefit. Benefit's a little bit drier. And the newest one to my collection, Dior. Heard all the ravings about this pencil, finally decided to pick it up and give it a try and I love it. It really is a great pencil much pricier than Anastasia and Benefit. And I'm not sure, but I think maybe looking at the packaging, it might be even less product, but I, I do love it. I really do love it. As far as gels go, baby, nothing, nothing compares to my Anastasia brow gel. This, this right here, this is hairspray for them brows. And let's end this eye section off with mascara. I've got only two Marc Jacobs. This is newer to my collection, but I'm in love with it. This is the Velvet Noir. I understand the hype. It is a fantastic mascara. So, so good. I'm going to throw in my MAC Extended Lash, Extended Play Lash, because Really, come on now. When you see this, when you see this brush, you'll know it's it's just perfection. There's nothing more perfect to get into those lower lashes. This is what I use it for. I don't ever use it for the top. This is my staple lower lash mascara that I've used for years and I love. Oh, one last thing, can't forget when it comes to eyes, lashes. Yes, lashes. And lash glue, of course. You need glue to put them on. Duo. So many other brands over the years have come out 
uh, with different glues. Duo's been around for quite some time. I remember back in the day when I first started watching beauty videos, Duo was really the only one everyone was using, and I love it. I've never seen the need to really move on to anything else. I love Duo. And I used the tube for a while, but I've moved on to this one that comes with a brush. I definitely like this one more to be able to control the amount better. And if you're wondering what lashes that I would definitely hands down always be purchasing, Ardell, easily accessible, they're everywhere, beauty supply stores, Walmart, Amazon, so many different varieties and they're affordable. They're the ones I'm wearing right now, yes. I am rocking my Ardells all day, every day, and my favorite uh, style is Wispies. I know for a long time everybody was raving about the Demi Wispies. I actually prefer the Wispies over the Demi Wispies. Of course we can't finish off the eye category without talking about eye shadow. Come on now. So first, before we get into the shadows, we gotta prep the eye first, right? So I need some kind of base for these oily eyelids and this one works so well. It's amazing. From MAC once again and their Prep and Prime line, the 24 hour extend eye base. Love, love using this. Now for the shadows. My MAC shadows, all of these circular shaped ones up here are pretty much all of my MAC favorites. You're gonna see texture in here. You're gonna see soft brown. You're gonna see bamboo. You're gonna see handwritten embark. These are the OGs. Been around for forever. I love them all. I still use them. They are my babies. Viseart, the moment I heard about this pro brand, and I love gravitating towards pro brands because since I was a teenager, flipping through my favorite magazines and looking at all the beautifully made up faces. That's what I wanted my makeup to look like. I didn't want my makeup to look like my friend's makeup. Oh my God. No offense. I wanted my makeup to look like Vanessa Williams makeup. I wanted my makeup to look like JLo's makeup. I wanted my makeup to look like Janet Jackson's makeup. That's what I wanted to look like. And I always wanted professional makeup and Viseart is it. And this is one of their 10 pan palettes. This is the warm version. And when this came out, I grabbed it right away because this was made for me. This color scheme has me written all over it. Urban Decay's Born to Run. It doesn't get any better than this. This is all you need to take with you wherever you go. I had to include Pat. There's no way I wasn't gonna include her. Six Pan Palette, her Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition. This was a hands down no brainer for me because all six shades are right up my alley. If this is the first time you guys have been tuned in to me, let me clue you in on my palette rule. I don't buy a palette unless it fulfills my 80-20 rule. I have to be able to be honest with myself enough to say, you know what, I like a good 80% of this palette. I know I will use 80% of this palette, so I'll go ahead and get it. I'm not going to get a palette that I know I only like, you know, two or three shades and the rest are just kind of going to sit there. And. Her 10 Pan Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction Palette. Absolutely, upon first glance, when it came out, I knew I took a long look at her other 10 pans that came before this one, but the color scheme just never jumped out at me like this one did. And last but not least, lips. Of course, we gotta start off with how you line them, right? I know, I know, here we go again. MAC lip pencils. I have cork for my everyday neutrals. Night Moth has always been my go-to for any deeper shades. 
and cherry is my go-to for any red tone lip color. These three, look at these, they're, they're all beat up and you, can, you can't hardly even read the information on them anymore. But doesn't matter to me, they all get used and I love them all. For lipsticks, yes, we're back. Max Kinkster, this is a newer shade to my collection, this beautiful medium brown tone. I have quite a few other MAC lipsticks, but right now this shade in particular is my favorite. And for deep uh, tones, my number one love for a few years now has been Pat McGrath's, her McMenemy. This is a beautiful deep tone shade. Ooh, I can't wait to bust this out in the coming months, going into fall and then winter. And her red, her red tone named Elson. This is just a mini from a trio that she has. Perfect, it's such a perfect, perfect blue-based red that glides on and really wears very well. Gloss, baby, yes. I am all about that gloss life, and that's why I have a whole bunch here to mention to you. What I'm wearing today, let's start off with that one, Shiseido. This one really caught me by surprise. I didn't know how fantastic of a lip gloss this was gonna be for me. This shade in particular, Honey Flash, Ooh, the formula is beautiful. Bare Minerals, this is another one. This is the shade Yas. Really great, uh, beautifully formulated gloss. Pat McGrath, hands down, one of the best. Probably in my top two of best glosses ever. This is Faux Real. MAC, Lip Glass, you knew that I was gonna include one of these in here. This is one of the shades that I love the most, Primordial, beautiful nudie shade. And I also have Buxom. Finally decided to cave in and get a Buxom gloss. Buxom glosses, probably as far as the whole Buxom brand goes, this is their, their champion product that everybody has loved. But the shade in particular, which of course is now no longer available because it was only in a limited edition uh, run. This is Irish Coffee. It does give you that plumping effect because it is called full-on plumping lip cream, but that plumping effect isn't uncomfortable. It doesn't last forever, but it is a really well done gloss. And last but not least, I have to include my MAC lip glass. This has been a staple for me for quite some time. I love using it because it's clear. So any lip color that I put on that I wanna take up the gloss factor another notch, I can always just pull this out. I thought I'd throw in a tool, why not? My number one beauty tool, hands down above anything else, is my beauty blender. And this is their little travel, silicone travel egg that I have hosting two of my sponges in and I have definitely uh, been a big fan favorite of the black ones, but they're, they're, they're really all the same. They do the same job. And there are lots of dupes on the market that are much more affordable, but I just love my Beauty Blender. There's just something about the original Beauty Blender that I really, really just love. So that's it. That is finally all of my amazing beauty products, makeup products, that I would have, this would be my go-to collection uh, to beat my face with if I wasn't a beauty guru. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check down below for all the info, all the links to go and purchase any of the stuff I mentioned if you're interested. Please give me a thumbs up. I really would appreciate if you did. Subscribe for many more videos just like this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.